in here with answers to your medical questions in our Ask the Doc segment is Dr. Masante Levine. So ear tubes, we hear about them all the time, now new guidelines. Yeah, they're still around and we use them. I mean, there's criteria when they're supposed to be put in, certainly repeated ear infections, a lot of fluid, uh, because it's very tight in that area, a lot of structures in that area, the nervous system, hearing balance. So it's something that uh, needs to be taken care of and certainly follow up with your otolaryngologist to see if the tubes are necessary. They don't necessarily just put them in on the spot. You know, a patient has to meet criteria as these guidelines recommend, but uh, I don't think they're going anywhere because allergies is a huge problem. Viruses are not going anywhere. So uh, it is useful, and it's glad that we have something that we can offer these kids uh, because as the segment indicated, their life is a lot better and they can go on living. Now, what happens if those tubes don't fall out? In, in the segment, it mentioned that after a year or two, the tube typically falls out. What if it doesn't? Yeah, I don't think there's any uh, long-term consequences if the tube remains. Uh, I don't hear a lot about them being pulled out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think eventually, just with the growth of the ear and the tympanic membrane, they eventually will fall out. But I don't think there's a lot of emphasis from otolaryngologists to remove it. So I don't think there's any long-term consequences, as far as I know. Okay, let's go to our KFDM News Facebook page. We've got lots of questions. A woman said that uh, she cannot move her thumb. It, it's just straight. It does not bend. What could be the cause? I would probably suspect some severe form of arthritis in the thumb joint or maybe a torn uh, ligament or tendon that controls the flexion uh, of the thumb. Obviously, very severe, very... Uh, uh, abnormal and certainly she needs an evaluation with a plain x-ray or maybe even MRI and a consultation with a hand surgeon such as an orthopedist. Okay, another question. Uh, I have a problem with my feet. My right foot has growth on the heel that looks remarkably similar to my left foot. What does this mean? Is this leftover tissue from a twin that I absorbed in the <laughs> womb? Not quite sure. <laughs> Kind of sounds interesting. He didn't post a picture. Our bodies are not perfect. I mm -hmm. mean, so one side may be larger than the other. Uh, we may have lumps and bumps that we don't need. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the appendix is kind of falls in that category. Uh, so it doesn't sound like it's malignant. If it's not bothering him, it's not causing a lot of pain. Cosmetically, he doesn't worry about it. I really wouldn't be concerned, but obviously can be removed by a podiatrist or another surgeon if it is bothering him. But uh, it sounds benign. Okay. Um, I fell on my ankle yesterday, and now when I walk on it, it pops a sound like a cracking sound. What does it mean? A lot of times when you fall on your ankle, you could have a fracture or you could traumatize the ligaments. Uh, cracking sometimes means maybe the joint is out of place. Certainly, if it's producing a lot of pain, swelling, and bruising, I would certainly get an x-ray of the ankle. Maybe she's even walking on it. Absolutely, and probably means it's not that painful, but you know, she's hearing some sounds. Certainly the most prudent thing is to get some x-rays initially to start with, uh, and the, the pain may come in two or three days. Uh -oh. uh, so you wanna be prudent, maybe even get an ankle brace, and obviously see your physician for more thorough evaluation. Okay, another person says, I get Charlie horses a lot. What's the reason? Good old cramping is always around, especially in the Southeast Texas heat and humidity, <laughs> uh, dehydration is a big issue. Medications such as cholesterol medicines, diuretics that we use for blood pressure. I would certainly maybe check the magnesium, phosphorus, and thyroid profile of the patient. Okay, and we've got lots of other questions, so we'll get to those in yes, just a minute. Don't go away. Dr. Levine will answer more of your questions next on Live at 5. We're back with Dr. Masante Levine to answer more of your medical questions. This one I think we probably need to answer right away. A man has tightness and pressure in his chest along mm -hmm. with tingling in his left arm. What could it be? Not good. You know, those are some bad signs. Yeah. Uh, it could be a heart attack, it could be a stroke. Not very good. Certainly uh, get to the emergency room as uh, like soon now. as possible. Like now. Yeah, maybe get call up and now. go. <laughs> Absolutely. Bicycle, car, whatever the case may be. Uh, because those are serious symptoms. Now, it may not be uh, anything related to a heart attack or stroke, but we just don't know. We have to do the x-rays, the blood, and the evaluation to figure that out. Okay, uh, another question. A 23-year-old female has a very painful cyst on both ovaries. What can be done? Uh, you know, there's always controversy about cysts and ovaries, whether or not they're truly causing the symptoms, abdominal pain, et cetera. Uh, a lot of times it depends on the size. Certainly the larger they get, typically probably the more problem of pain that they create. So cyst in and of itself normally are benign and can be watched. Uh, certainly if it develops any type of malignant features, they are removed. So a lot of times the gynecologist will evaluate and manage that uh, to okay. help with the patient. 
Another question, a woman has neuropathy, but prescription meds are not working. What else can be done? I would probably just go through the different types of prescription medications. She might need two or even three prescription medications to deal with the neuropathy. We use the medicines on different levels to attack it from different uh, sites and certainly trying to find the reversible cause of the neuropathy. Is it a circulation issue? Is it a pinched nerve? Is it diabetes? So try to treat the reversible cause, but then also maybe treat it with two or three different medications. Okay, a man has had diarrhea for over a month. He's on prescription medicine and antibiotics. What could be wrong? The antibiotic certainly could be causing that. We talk a lot about antibiotic yeah. stewardship, making sure that antibiotics are absolutely necessary because there are side effects. Antibiotic can kill you with side effects, that is. C. diff colitis is the big issue uh, brought on by antibiotics. We actually treat that with antibiotics. Oh, uh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> Sounds like a vicious circle. It, it is, in a sense, but the antibiotics, flagell and vancomycin oral tablets are very good. Uh, you can maybe try some of the over-the-counter bio, um, the supplements that they use uh, for that. Uh, but certainly, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, can cause diarrhea, uh, milk products, a whole list of things. Get properly evaluated. Okay, let's see uh, some other questions. My skin is very dry. I have scab spots on my skin. They itch and bleed when my skin is dry. What is this and what can I use to get rid of it? You know, we like to look at rashes. That's the most information we get. Pretty good description. Some things I would think about. Certainly eczema, mm -hmm. maybe even psoriasis. A lot of times we start off with some topical steroid creams. Okay. I was wanting to know if both parents had congestive heart failure. Is there a strong chance that it can be hereditary for the remaining 13 siblings out of 16 kids? Well, you know, the most common cause of heart failure is high blood pressure and poor circulation. Those are risk factors. Normally, those risk factors do run in the family. The good thing is that it's out. People are more educated about illnesses these days. There's more medications. So they don't necessarily have to progress to heart failure. I think if they are aware of their family history, mm -hmm. get on top of your risk factors, get your blood, blood pressure treated, get your cholesterol down, eat healthy, exercise, and that shouldn't happen. Typically heart failure, like I say, is a result of uh, poorly treated risk factors. So as long as you're aware of it and Absol you're smart about it. Absolutely, okay. eat the right things, exercise. Okay, another question. I have chronic pain in my upper back. I've had it so long that I try blocking it out. Some days it works. Others, other days it's just horrible. Any suggestions? Absolutely. Get some x-rays. Go to a chronic pain management doctor. They use different modalities to treat chronic pain. Injections, uh, TENS unit. Uh, you might have a herniated disc. might have a tumor. You need some x-rays to figure that out. Listen to your body. If you're having constant pain, don't ignore it. Something's wrong. At the end of the day, we might not be able to figure out exactly what the pain is, but get a proper workup, and there are people out there that can treat pain very well. All right, Dr. Levine, as always, we appreciate your help. Yes, ma'am. And you can always visit our website and see the answers to these and other medical questions posted online. And if you'd like to have Dr. Levine answer your medical questions, you can always mail us at the address listed on your screen, faxes 892-7305. Email us at laf at kfdm.com or post those questions every Monday on our KFDM News Facebook page.